Greeting Earthlings, if you follow the channel, you know that we love all things Apollo, and that during our last visit to Steve Gervetson's amazing space collection, we were given the opportunity to take two holy boxes of Apollo electronics to our lab. These are the boxes that brought you voice, data and live TV from the moon, and should be early masterpieces of microwave electronics, the blackest of black arts in analog electronics. Over the many previous episodes, we explained the basics of the unified S-band communication system. We opened up the amplifier and showed how it worked, but we stopped short of turning it on as we did not have the proper high power load and directional couplers. However, news flash, we do have them now, thanks to a donation from the company R&D Microwaves in New Jersey. So thanks so much R&D Microwaves, link below, and stay peeled for more on the amplifier. We then got the transponder fully up and running. After turning our attention to the ground side of the link, we were able to establish the bidirectional microwave link between the Earth and the Moon side of things. Phew, that was a boatload of work on a very complicated system and took most of the 15 previous episodes. But on the grand scheme of things, we have just scratched the surface. What we have worked on so far are the two boxes in yellow, which is the microwave transmission front end. The complete communication system is much, much more complicated. See here, our two boxes are just an itsy bitsy part of the system, which includes a whole bunch of other boxes. The other box's job is to transfer the actual communication information in and out of the Earth to Moon microwave link we have just re-established. We previously showed how data and voice were modulated on the Earth side for the uplink. It was mighty complicated and we reproduced it thanks to modern Keysight equipment plus our genuine NASA up data link test box. True alert! <laughs> abort, abort, abort! Apollo 12 Houston, try FCE to auxiliary, over. So the uplink was already complicated enough, but brace yourself, because that's nothing compared to the reverse direction, the downlink, which has many more modes and input sources. That's why it takes so many more boxes. But guess what? Marcel, our other intrepid collector and team member, loaned us most of them for restoration. Marcel has given us the pre-modulation processor, the audio center, the uplink data, and the telemetry boxes. I have since acquired the central timing equipment. So we have practically everything save for the data recorder and the SCE, the famous thing that Apollo 12 had to switch to aux after they got hit by lightning. All this to say that in this episode, we are going to try to bring up the next box the pre-modulation processor. The pre-modulation processor, or PMP, is at the center of both the audio and data system. And you guessed it, it's complicated. We'd be lucky if we could get just the basics going in one episode. So we have Eric and Mike, and Eric is holding the box we're going to try to open today, which is the pre-modulation processor. Pre -modulation processor. Mike, you have the amplifier. Yeah. Because we found there was a nipple on it. This is the only nipple we can show on YouTube, as Eric says. <laughs> see, see, if, see if we can. Ah, it won't focus. Hold it. There you go. I have it. And Eric, your box has a nipple too, which seems to be the same. And we're wondering how we unpressurize the thing. Uh, so we are going to have a look at what that nipple is because it it looked like it was blind. There is a hole that goes blind, and and we can't remember how we depressurize that one because Ken did it. <laughs> <laughs> I think they can get it by just loosening all the screws on the lid. It 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 it, it seems that this is what happened. Uh, boink! There it goes out, and I need that. There's a little thread in there, and that's of course the amplifier that we did in mm -hmm. episode. Well, one. With the custom lid. Ah! It's a plug. Ah. 
So this is just a plug with a ring and it's blind. Which means if I if the other one is still pressurized and I'm taking the ring out, it's going to flame my face. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, which means that Ken just probably did exactly what you said, it just loosened the bolts and let it depressurize. But which brings another question, how are we going to repressurize this thing? How did they pressurize it in the first place? I, I would think a, a pressure chamber. So they wouldn't have a, a fragile valve mechanism in flight, right? Uh, Mike, you say the, uh, the transponder had a valve. Transponder has a valve, Disky has a valve. And the... Uh, the Uplink box has a pinch tube. Yes, the uh, box has a pinch so, tube. So everybody uses a different so way. So it's completely non-standard. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Everyone makes a different thing. It would be also interesting to look at serial number 16. Serial number 16. So 16 is a pretty early unit. Yeah, so 66, all right. But that's the contract date because here there are inspection stamps with a 67 on it. It's going to be the, this is the original date of manufacture mm -hmm. and then they've, they've changed the dash number. So it's been upgraded to a later revision at some point. And then somehow repressurized. Yeah. Uh, because you see it's over, over, over printed on it? Or? The 0006 here is very clearly different from the, the ME478. Dash 0068, hmm. that is the base part number. Uh huh, oh yeah. Ugh. That's where the, the handle would help though. Why well, you, you have to take it from the. Why oh, it doesn't go in? Yeah, because the paint's. There we thick. go, you got it. Alright, we're gonna, we're gonna alternate between. I don't know what they painted with it, but it's awfully thick. So it's all loosey-goosey, but it hasn't popped up. Yeah, we've got all the screws loosened, but it hasn't, so it hasn't separated yet here. Time for some coercion. Oh. Tap, tap. No, I think I'll use the um, as last time. Ah. Okay, you're good to go. All right. You know, we can certainly try to get a whiff of the inside once we uh, lift the lid on that. Yeah, you smell nothing. Yeah, none of this stuff smell uh, anything. The uh, AGC was odorless, the transponder was odorless. I, I, I would think the, the test run, I think, because mm -hmm. uh, we, we have to do that for military parts. And I guess so the, so I, I think it's by design, not, not, yeah. not a happy accident. Grand opening. hanging up on? I think there might be. Yeah, we might have to take the connectors out. I see modules. Yeah, well, the circuitry is all exposed. It's not completely potted, so that's that's very good for us. Connector removal? Yeah, I think so. We tried with an adjustable wrench first, but it was of course space flight tight and it became obvious that we would risk damaging the box. So instead, I am machined a custom tool that would be much safer. Machine ourselves a little tool and somebody gets somebody holds the box, somebody holds the connector. Okay. Yeah, a piece of cake. Okay, one connector done with no damage. One out of four. <sighs> what? Oh, yeah, there is, uh... there, there, there is some stuff in it. This is glued down. Yeah, that's what's causing all the problems. Yeah. All right. On to the next one. Last one before we can find see what's inside. Okay, you have it, mine. Yeah. Oh, oh. Okay, go for opening. All right, here we go. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, wow. That is serious looking.
working hardware once again. All right. The gasket off. Oh, did it grab back on? Yes, so. Here it comes. Ooh. I've got a couple more coming your way. Okay. These little clips. Yeah. It's like trapezoidal washers. The half moon washers. Yeah, so the so it just fits in like that. Mm -hmm. So the, the chassis here has studs. Yeah, it's studs, threaded studs sticking up. And then these little caps screw down onto oh. them to hold the thing in place. Wow, and the, the springs at the bottom. Oops. Yeah, they're leaf springs. It's welded. This is a weld, it's not soldered. Oh, yeah, there, there, is, there is, I think it's a combo. Some yeah. are soldered, some are welded. Hmm. Yeah, the wires up here, and these are all soldered in place. These are welded. And the components are welded on. So receive data and voice, voice relay. That's to switch from CSM voice to relayed LEM voice via the CSM. That is send. Limiter FM mixer, that's FM modulation, obviously. Bifes modulation, this is BPSK. This is data modulation, principal data modulation alternate. SCO, I'm not sure what that is. This is actually the scientific data modulation section. Anything on the other side? Yes, the recessed modules are named on that side. Okay. TV. So, uh, yeah, yeah, so that's the Morse, right? You pull all the modules and so can screws come out of the module. Just oh, yeah. so the wiring might stay intact. Oh, mm -hmm. we might have lucked out. <laughs> all right. We're going to need a bigger jar. <laughs> Long, longer, the longest vault in history. <laughs> of cake. Our power supply module. Beautiful. This is probably the most beautiful construction we have seen. It's, it's really pretty. It is definitely the best mechanical construction of, of them all. Gee. Ready for the reverse engineering? I need my lab code. <laughs> <laughs> this is. I mean, PCBs are widely overrated. You don't need any to fly to the moon. All right, we didn't even get to powering up anything yet. Given the complexity of the thing, we divvied up the next tasks. Ken did his reverse engineering and has posted a superb article on his blog which I will link in the doodly-doo. Head over there if you want to know what every single module does. I will also try my best at an overview sweetened by elevator music in the next episode. Mike spent two weeks beeping every single connector wire, making sure our schematics actually match the real box, something we had found lacking with our transponder. I got to figure out how to hook it up and test it, aided by my incredible collection of colored markers. And Eric is making a reproduction of the section of control panel switches that we need to control this very complicated animal. This should keep us busy for a while, and we'll see you in the next episode.